Here's today's project and it requires that we be able to drill extremely straight holes. And if you don't have a drill press, that can be a problem. You'll be able to find this video elsewhere, but this video you're watching now will be about how we can drill straight holes using just a drill like this, no drill press involved, and we'll use a jig like this. Take a look at the jig up close and you can see it's got one screw attaching to this piece here and two attaching to the next. One, two. That's so the screws don't intersect with one another. Let's pretend we want to make a hole right here on that X. That's just a piece of sharpened coat hanger. For best possible results, we clamp. Now, of course, I shouldn't even have to tell you this, but you're going to have mixed results depending on how flat your board is. This one has a little bit of a cup to it, so when you put the jig on it, you would probably be best not to spin the jig, try to keep it oriented the same as you move about your holes. Then at least if they're off in along one axis, they'll all be off in the same direction and your nail pegs will be parallel. Also, it's only going to be as good as you are careful. So you have to start with extremely flat material. You have to make sure that your cuts are extremely square. Uh, you know, reduce error everywhere that you can. And if you're careful and patient, you can turn a pretty good result. The spacing here is one of the downsides of this jig. This one in particular is made for something like a quarter of an inch. I think that's what the diameter of this rod is. So you'll need to make the spacing here between your boards a little bit smaller than the drill bit that you're using. And that way, when you drill through the hole, it will, op it will enlarge this into a circle because it will start as a square and then what you'll have is a perfectly square hole. The thickness of this jig, the material that you use, is largely dependent on the drill bit that you're using because it will act as a depth set. So in this case, with the smaller drill bit, I have to first determine how far one second in this case this is the material that I'm drilling into so I want to determine how deep I'm drilling into it and then measure from that to where it will be forced to hit the chuck and stop so in my case the jigs material width will be around an inch and a half here are my four new pieces they were cut very square and this is the diameter that I'm after ultimately, so I want to reduce it a little more. So I'll fasten it together this way and then drill it out a bit larger. Working on a piece of glass is recommended just to help keep it straight. And the steel rule is just to act as a spacer. Ideally, it sits perfectly flat and it doesn't rock when you press on one of its ends. And if you want to get really picky with it, clamp all four corners to the piece of glass and put some glue or caulking right here on these inside corners. When it sets up, it should be nice and hard. 
Of course, you could even take it a step further and use joinery or a piece that goes from end to end for additional stability. But once you start to nitpick that much, I suggest you buy a drill press. It would be nice to leave the part attached to the rest of the board so I would have all of this surface area to run my jig on, but there's a problem. Therefore, I'm going to have to cut this part away and I'll only be able to use the surface area of the triangle for the jig. That's a good thing for the purpose of this video because it will expose to us the limits of this procedure. The wood being used here is yellow pine, and I'll return to that point in just a moment. But I wanted to mention that the holes being drilled here are just shallow, just enough to get the jig started without being able to see. And back to the yellow pine, it's not the best species to use for this sort of jig, and the reason being, it has dark and light spots, which are respectively hard and soft because of the seasonal growth. So you might want to use a wood variety that's a little more consistent throughout. And that applies to both the project as well as the jig. Yellow pine has its places, but not here. There you have it. So what's the error? Well, I can relate it to you two ways. One is mathematically. At two inches, it's about a 32nd of an inch, which simplifies to 1 64th of an inch, which is about 1.5%. The other way I can relate it to you is visually. And in my opinion, that's the more convincing way. It does a pretty good job. Of course, you have to remember there's no magic jig that's going to solve all of your problems. The decent result here is because of error correction. Wherever I can, I try to get it as nice as I can. And the overall result is that the more careful and deliberate you are, the neater your job ends up. <laughs> okay, hope this was good for you. See you later. Drill presses are not without their limitations. If I wanted to put a hole in the center of this, I can't get anywhere near it because the post is in the way. And so this jig has no such restriction. It's another good way to use this.